Hello everyone this is part 6 of what if Naruto was trained by Anko and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like and subscribe to see more comment down below. Now let's So looked at the clones in front of him with some surprise. It wasn't every day that you witnessed a genin make so many cage bunshin, shadow clones, and not be winded. The way how the genin treated the situation was also something that surprised him. He didn't know who trained this boy but he was not thinking like a genin. He created two Mizu bunshin, water clones, to deal with the clones. He watched as they attacked his Mizu bunshin and was impressed with the kid. That's when he witnessed the black-haired boy unfold whatever the blonde gave him. It turned out to be Infuma Shuri Ken, Wind Demon Shuri Ken. The boy jumped into the air and launched the projectile. He watched as it avoided his two Mizu Bunshin and came right at him. It was an interesting ploy but it would do nothing against him. Zabuza easily caught the Fuma Shuri Ken when he noticed another Fuma Shuri Ken. So, that was their plan, hiding another Shuri Ken within the shadow of the first one. The Cage Shuriken no Jutsu, Shadow Shuriken technique, a very good technique. However, Zabuza then jumped over the second Fuma Shuriken as it passed by him. A Shuriken will not touch me, he shouted. How about a Kunai? Zabuza turned to see the Fuma Shuriken transform into that blonde. He threw a Kunai and was on target with Zabuza's head. Zabuza cursed as he was forced to release the prison in order to avoid the Kunai. He managed to avoid it and the kunai nicked him on the cheek. That's when he noticed the tag on the end of it. There was an explosion that consumed Zabuza. Naruto hit the water and sunk for a bit before swimming to the surface. He broke the surface only to see a very pissed off Zabuza, his blade raised. You're dead kid, Zabuza exclaimed. Lucky for him, Kakashi saved him with the Fuma Shuri Ken. Naruto dove under the water and swam back to the shore. He reached just in time as Kakashi launched another massive Sutan, water release, Jutsu. He ignored it and focused on the remaining Mizu Bunshin. He threw two kunai, one was off its mark. The clone batted one away while the other exploded in the clone's face, dispelling it. Naruto shook off the access water while Kakashi was about to finish the real Zabuza off. That was until someone interfered. Naruto sat on a stump near Tazuna's home. He had just finished securing the area with traps, just in case someone came for the bridge builder. Sakura called him a little paranoid because she believed that Gato's main attacker was dead. Naruto was not so sure about that. The end of that battle kept running through his mind. The person who killed Zabuza couldn't be much older than him. He did it without a hint of hesitation. What made Naruto curious was the Hunter Nin's next action, which was when he took the body away from the area. There was something that nagged Naruto about that. He sighed and tried to relax. Maybe Sakura is right about me being paranoid. Naruto thought. Hey Naruto. Naruto turned to the sound of Sakura's voice. Kakashi sensei is up and he wants to see us. Fine, I'm coming. Naruto said. He made his way back to the house and continued on upstairs. He entered the room to see his teammates, his sensei and Tazuna. He sat in the corner and looked at Kakashi. Glad you can join us Naruto. I must thank you for your help in getting me free from Zabuza's prison. Kakashi said. No problem, I'll just put that on your tab. Naruto said. Kakashi sighed and looked at his students. I have some bad news for you guys, we might be fighting Zabuza again. Kakashi said, shocking everyone. What are you talking about sensei? I thought you said that Zabuza was dead. You checked his pulse and everything, Sakura exclaimed. I know but that hunter nin didn't act like a hunter nin is supposed to do. It shouldn't have mattered if we were there or not, he should have taken Zabuza's sword as a confirmation while destroying the body. Then there was the weapon they used. Senbon are not the normal killing tool. They are too thin and there are only a few spots on the body that a Senbon can kill. Kakashi explained. That makes sense. Anko Wanisen used Senbon but she coats them with various types of poisons, some that kill, some that paralyze. It could be that this guy coated his Senbon with something that made us think that he's dead. 
Naruto added. Or he hit a certain point on his body that gives the illusion of death. All Hunter Nin are skilled with the human body. Either way, I assume that Zabuza will be out for a while unless this Hunter Nin is skilled with medicine. If it's the latter, we have about a week. Kakashi said. Aren't you guys overthinking this? Asked a worried Tazuna. In the Shinobi world, we have to deal with the unexpected. Naruto said. Well said, that is why you guys will be ready for the next fight. It's time to train and prepare you for Zabuza's return. Kakashi stated. What can we do in a week? Sakura asked worried. Don't sell yourselves short. You guys acted very well in your first life and death battle. I have confidence that you'll do well. Kakashi said with an eye smile. Naruto sighed and shook his head. If Kakashi had such confidence, he should have been training them since they were a team. The next day, Kakashi, who was using crutches, stood in a forest with his team. They all faced him and waited for the training to begin. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is get better control of your chakra. Kakashi said. What do you mean sensei? Sakura asked. Chakra is the energy we use to cast our jutsu. It is a mixture of physical and spiritual energies. What you have to understand is that this energy must be mastered and control if you want to better use your chakra in using jutsu. To do so, I'm going to show you the first of few chakra exercises. We call this the Kinabori no Shugyo, tree climbing practice. Kakashi said. Naruto just smirked and prepared himself. Sasuke and Sakura were confused by what Kakashi said. But we already know how to climb trees. Sakura said. Do you know how to climb without your hands? Kakashi asked. He then demonstrated the Kinabori no Shugyo and shot two of his students. You must focus a fixed amount of your chakra to the bottom of your feet, and using that to climb the tree. Kakashi threw three kunai at each of their feet. Use this to mark your progress. I suggest running first. Each genin grabbed a kunai and sprinted toward a tree. Sasuke ran up his tree before losing his hold on his chakra and breaking the bark. He marked his point before flipping down and landing on his feet. He looked at the mark with analyzing eyes. So, too much chakra and you get pushed off. That must mean that too little chakra and you fall right off. Sasuke thought. Hey this is pretty easy. Sakura said. Kakashi and Sasuke looked to see Sakura sitting on a branch. She was all smiles. Kakashi looked at her. That isn't surprising. She has the smallest reserves among her teammates. That's when he realized that Naruto was nowhere to be seen. Wait a minute, where's Naruto? He thought. You should see this view guys, Naruto shouted. They looked up but they couldn't see Naruto. That would mean that Naruto was on the top of the tree. Said blonde was taking in the beauty of the forest. He was very happy that he got up the tree so fast. That meant that his speed and chakra control was getting better. This was an exercise that Anko convinced him to do every day, even after he mastered the exercise. She explained to him that his chakra was massive, bigger than ever the Sandimes, she also encouraged him to challenge himself with this exercise. Either way, this technique was a breeze for him. He decided to go down just to see everyone's surprised faces. He raced down the tree and came to a stop at the bottom. He walked the last three steps off the tree and gave everyone a smirk. He saw that they were surprised and he revealed in their surprise. All three had different thoughts about Naruto's success. Wow, he made it higher than me. I thought he had a lot chakra because he could use the cage bunch and not suffer from chakra exhaustion. Wouldn't that make his control bad? Maybe, he's much stronger than we believe. Sakura thought as she looked at the blonde. What the hell is going on? How is the Dobi, loser, so much better than me at this? He's been doing much better than me at everything, even against Zabuza. Is it because of that woman he calls his Wanisan? Sasuke thought viciously. So she showed him this too. I'm not complaining but he's ahead of his teammates. I want them to be at the same level for now. If this continues, I can see some friction between him and Sasuke. Kakashi thought. Well, this was much unexpected. Let's see if you can keep it up Naruto. Continue with the exercise. Naruto snorted at him but did not disobey or challenge Kakashi this time. He ran up the tree and ran all the way to the top. 
Sasuke growled and continued his exercise, not wanted to fall behind him. Sakura followed his lead and tried to get a little higher. In a hideout in the trees, Zabuza laid in rest. His ally watched over him as he healed from his run-in with Hitaki Kakashi. He had done the best he could but he would need to go back outside to get more herbs to speed up the healing. As they spoke, three people entered the room. It was a short man in a business suit who was flanked by two would-be swordsmen. The short man looked at the two with a mocking smirk. So the fearful Kirigakure no Kijin, demon of the mist, comes back a failure. Perhaps your reputation is exaggerated. Gato mocked. Zabuza said nothing and ignored the man. He sneered and walked up to the bed. Hey Zabuza, I'm talking to you. He reached out to poke him when he was held by a strong grip. Gato turned to the teenager who had him in a vice grip. You will not touch Zabuza Sama with your filthy hands, the boy warned. Ah, my, wrist, Gato groaned. His two bodyguards reached for their swords but were suddenly facing their weapons as Zabuza's partner had him at their necks. So fast, they both thought. You don't want to mess with me. I'm in a very bad mood. He growled. Haku, that's enough. Zabuza ordered. Haku calmed down and reappeared at his master. Gato growled at the boy but made no moves to do anything. Just get the job done Zabuza. He shouted before leaving to get his hand fixed. His guards followed him after getting their weapons. Alone, Zabuza turned toward Haku. You didn't need to do that Haku. Zabuza said as he motioned to the kunai he held under the covers. I know but he is scum. I do not think we can trust him. Haku said. Right now, we don't have a choice. We will cross that bridge when we reach it. Now, continue telling me about what you learned about Kakashi and his brats. Zabuza ordered. Yes Zabuza Sama. Haku said and continued his report. Sakura sat down at the bottom of her tree, tired from all the work she had been doing. She didn't have the stamina that Sasuke or Naruto had. She looked to see that Sasuke had gotten a little higher than before and he was increasing his height with every go. Naruto was doing something much different than what they were doing. He was doing pull-ups with just his fingertips. He also had a pretty big boulder attached to his feet. He was doing this with his chakra and he didn't look all that winded. It was at this point that Sakura came to a realization. She realized how strong Naruto really was. She still thought that he was rude, crass and idiotic but if it wasn't of him, they wouldn't have done nearly as well as they did against Zabuza. Sure, she didn't do anything but guard Tazuna but he thought of the plan that saved Kakashi and he took out that remaining clone that Zabuza created. Maybe, he wasn't the idiot that she thought that he was and maybe, he could help her get stronger. They didn't really get along but that didn't mean that Naruto wouldn't help her if she asked. Gathering her courage and swallowing her pride, she made her way over to Naruto. Hey Naruto, Sakura called out. Naruto stopped his exercise and looked down at Sakura. She took a deep breath and faced him. I was wondering if you can help me increase my chakra pool. The request shocked Naruto that he lost his control of the boulder and his grip. He fell to the ground in a heap and grunted as he hit the ground. Kakashi who was watching the whole exchange couldn't help but smile at his team. He could see that Sakura was taking the first step in becoming a true Kunoichi. It must have been hard for her when she asked Naruto of all people to help her. Maybe they would become a perfect team after all. What the hell? I ask you for help and you think that I'm on some type of medication, Sakura roared. I'm just saying that because you never really were interested in becoming strong. To tell you the truth, I thought that you were taking something as you really weren't that strong to beginning with. Naruto answered honestly. Shanaro, Sakura exclaimed and bashed Naruto in the head. Then again, they could use a little bit more work. Chapter 12 Naruto was grumbling as he watched over the bridge from a high position. He was regulated to guard duty on Kakashi's orders. He would switch out with Sakura after lunch but that wasn't what he was so irritated about. He couldn't stand how lazy Kakashi was. After showing his skill with the chakra exercise and even helping Sakura become a better ninja, the guy didn't even give him some other type of training. He had asked for a technique or a new exercise but he would just wave him off and tell him that he was good right where he was. What kind of answer was that? It did not improve his impression of the Jonan and made him even more disrespectful toward him. 
Naruto sighed and decided not to think about so much. He already had some techniques that he learned from Anko. He wished that she would teach him the Senea Jashu, hidden shadow snake hands, but she was very adamant about him not learning it. She did teach him that Genjutsu that charmed snakes which was pretty cool. She did teach him a Katan, fire release, technique and he learned a Doton, earth release, from a scroll that she gave him. He also learned a technique from Aruka which could be useful. He had some stuff that he could work on so he wasn't feeling too mad anymore. Hey kid, I'm breaking for lunch. Tazuna called out to him. All right, I'm on my way down. Naruto said and jumped off his perch. He landed next to the guy and the two left the bridge with others who were also breaking for lunch. Each of them had a clone follow him to protect and observe. After Sakura came to relieve him, Naruto decided to head into the village just to see how things were. He used a henge, transformation, to move as one of the villagers. What he saw tugged at his heart. He knew that things were bad but he wasn't prepared to see how badly. He saw that the stories barely had food in him, children were living in the streets and people's will had been broken. He had stopped a man from stealing but stopped his justice when the man was in tears. He must have no choice in doing what he did because of what Gato had done. The more he witnessed, the angrier he got. It took all his willpower not to find Gato and beat his ass. He couldn't stand it and wanted to do something about. It was then he swore that he would help Tazuna complete his bridge so that it would break the hold that tyrant held on the people of Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves. He left and headed back to Tazuna's house to get some training done. The next day found Sakura in a lot of pain. She was on the ground and groaning in pain. She looked up at Naruto's clone and glared at him. The clone would just grin at her, which pissed her off more. After getting the exercise down and increasing her stamina a bit, Naruto began sparring with her. He said it was so that she could get used to the Kinabori no Shugyo, tree climbing practice, without thinking about it but she felt that this was just a way to torture her for all the things that happened back at the academy. She got up and glared at her sparring partner. He just grinned at her. You managed to stay on the tree's surface for 45 minutes. That's quite an improvement but unless you can spar with me for an hour, you're not quite ready yet. The clone said. I am going to wipe that stupid smirk off your face. Sakura growled. That's the spirit pinky. Let's see what you got. Naruto said. Sakura prepared to run up to get him. Sakura, a voice stopped her. It belonged to Sasuke. He looked at her for a while and Sakura blushed under the gaze. Can you help me with this exercise? He asked. The clone and Sakura looked at him in surprise. Holy crap, did I just hear that? Did the great Sasuke ask for help? Is it the end of the world? I've got to let Kakashi know that demons are about to enter our dimension. The clone exclaimed frantically. Sasuke glared at Naruto with evil intentions. Shut up clone, Sakura shouted. She turned back to Sasuke. Of course I'll help you Sasuke-kun. Let me show you how it's done. She walked with him toward his tree and began tell him what he need to do. The clone just gagged and decided to practice his taijutsu. Three days would pass during the mission. Kakashi was getting stronger and he would be ready for Zabuza when the week would be up. Naruto was also getting stronger with his training as he had helped a woman out earlier in the day. She decided to give him a manual and a scroll. The manual was a basics in Fuinjutsu, sealing technique, and the scroll was a technique called Daibakufu no Jutsu, great waterfall technique. This excited Naruto as he would get to add something to his arsenal. Sasuke had finally made it up to the top of his tree and had demanded that Naruto spar with him. Naruto would have agreed if he didn't have guard duty in the morning. Sakura was also getting stronger and was so close in defeating Naruto's clone. Everything was going great for Team Kakashi. As they talked and had dinner with Tazuna's family, Anari decided that enough was enough. He slammed his hands on the table and glared at the first person he saw. That person was Naruto. Look at you, laughing and grinning like an idiot. How can you be so stupid? Why are you still here anyway? You're just wasting your time. No one can defeat Gato. Anari shouted. What the hell are you going on about? Is this about your dad, Kaiser? Naruto asked. Two days ago, Anari had left the table when Tazuna mentioned Kaiser. 
He then explained that Kaiser was the village hero. He was a fearless man who believed in the right thing. When Gato came into town, he was one of few that stood up to him. He was overwhelmed by Gato and was made an example of to the village when they executed him. The scene had destroyed Inari's belief in heroes. Man, all you've done is whine and bitch about how we're going to die. I'm glad that I'm nothing like you. What do you know? You're nothing but a fool. You don't know anything about pain and suffering. Inari spat loudly. That would be the wrong thing to say to Naruto. Inari found himself slammed against a wall and looking at the coldest blue eyes. When Sakura was going to stop Naruto, she was stopped by one of his kunai, which landed dangerously close to her leg. Naruto glared at the boy with absolute loathing. You're nothing but a coward. You speak of pain and suffering but you have a mother and a grandfather who love you. There are many within the village who have less than you and here you are, crying. Like you've lost more. You haven't lost Jack. What's even worst is that you spit on your grandfather's bravery and on your father's grave. He fought so that you would not have to live like you're living now. Yeah, he died, but he died for your sake. It's the same as you grandfather but here you are whining and crying. Grow the hell up, Naruto roared. Naruto, that's enough. Release Inari. That's an order, Kakashi said. Naruto sucked his teeth and released Inari. Inari sank to the ground under the gaze of Naruto. The blonde stomped out of the house, slamming the door behind him. Everyone was silent and the tension in the room was thick. Sakura was the first to break that silence. I don't think that I've ever seen Naruto so angry. What do you think set him off? Sakura asked no one in particular. Naruto's has endured more pain and suffering that you can't even image. Kakashi said. Inari wiped his eyes and made his way out of the house. Tsunami made a move to go talk with him but Kakashi held up his hand. He stood and made his way to speak with Inari. Naruto was breathing hard and glared at the forest that was in front of him. There was some destruction from the jutsu that Naruto had been launching into the forest. He was so damn angry at Inari right now. He could believe that he had the nerve to say that he didn't know about pain and suffering. He suffered since the day he could talk. No one wanted him, no one liked him and no one cared for him. He was alone for most of his life all because some people couldn't tell the difference between him and the QB. Yeah, he cried about it but he moved forward and worked to get people to acknowledge him. He didn't wallow in despair and spout nonsense. He clapped his hands hard and began running through those hand seals again. Tora, Tiger, Ushi, Ox, Saru, Monkey, Yu, Rabbit, Hatsuji, Ram, I, Boar, Ushi, Uma, Horse, Saru, Tora, Inu, Dog, Tora, Me, Snake, Tora, Ushi, Saru, Yu, Tori, Bird, Sutan, Daibakufu no Jutsu, Naruto roared. The water swirled in front of him and shot forward into the forest. The force of the water tore up the ground and ripped off some branches. When the technique died down there was some more damage. Naruto was still pretty angry, so he summoned some clones and had a free-for-all. Kakashi sat next to Inari and waited for the boy to talk. Inari didn't say anything and would sometimes rub where he was grabbed. Does it hurt? Kakashi asked. A little. Inari answered. Sorry about Naruto, he tends to wear his feelings on his sleeves. He's had a hard life since he was born. Kakashi said. What do you mean? Inari asked. Naruto was the only child born on a tragic day in Kanoa. Because of this, he was ignored and bullied by many of the villagers. He was like you in a way, as he would cry and wonder why life was so unfair. Kakashi answered. He doesn't act like it. Inari said. I guess he got tired of crying. He decided to try and make everyone take notice of him. As he got older, he got a few people to notice him and he was happy. He wants you to see that you do have people who notice you and want you to be happy. Kakashi said with an eye smile. Inari looked at him and then at the moon. He just sat in silence with Kakashi keeping him company. The next morning, the household was awake and waiting for breakfast. Everyone was seated at the table with the exception of Naruto. Sakura was a little worried but also pissed at him. I can't believe that idiot stayed out all night. I'm going to find him and give him a piece of my mind. Sakura stated, I'll go and find him. 
Knowing the idiot, he probably wore himself out training. Sasuke said. He stood and made his way out of the house. Naruto snored loudly as he lay out on the ground. His little battle royal was intense and he barely got out of it. He blamed Anko as his clones had her sadistic attitude. After winning, he dragged himself to a tree and laid down on it. He had a little bit of chakra and was really tired. He was only going to rest for a few minutes but ended up sleeping for the night. As he snored, he suddenly awake and had a kunai in his hand. He grabbed someone and slammed him down to the ground. His kunai touched the neck of someone. Naruto was ready to spill some blood when he saw who he had pinned. Naruto was quickly off the person and back leaning against a tree. The person in question sat up and had a blush on her face. Naruto had a blush as well and was now kneeling and bowing at the person, muttering apologies from grabbing her chest. The girl in question was finally able to calm him down so that she could talk. Please, calm down. I'm not angry at you. It was my fault seeing that I attempted to wake you up. By your skills, you are a shinobi and I should have known better. I accept your apology, she said. Thank you. It's not really my fault because of the tendencies of my Wanisen. She usually ambushes me constantly. I'm Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto greeted. Nice to meet you Naruto, my name is Haku. Quote. That will be it for this video if you want more, comment down below like, subscribe and see you guys later.